Tara ji, you have said in a previous session while discussing the attraction towards sex that one does not need to get entangled one does not need to get entangled even to overcome or suppress one rather needs to leave sex behind one should seek that for which one is really eager all the energy should go in that direction one is not rejecting sex one is just prioritizing correctly one is saying that the one that has a lower priority must wait because there is something immensely more important that is higher up the priority and that which is higher up the priority is so immense that it would never get completed never get over so the one who is waiting for his turn the one who is lower down the order would just keep waiting he would not need to be killed he has just been permanently postponed then she says that in the same session acharya ji has said in the subconscious there is a lot that terrifies you and you try to escape that fear by not trying to know more about it when you first enter you will find that which will scare you but if you stay with it courageously you will meet the one that delivers you from that fear if a person doesn't meet that which scares him how will he meet the one that liberates from the fear therefore on your way meet all the imperfections and impurities as only it's after that you will meet the one that purifies perfects and completes you so having quoted these two excerpts from a previous session the question is in the context of the pull of maya and the worldly here relating to the pull of the sexual energy does one acknowledge it and transcend it by focusing on the anant or god or does one drop the defenses against maya go through the worldly and only then arrive at the door of the anant thank you so two excerpts have been quoted and apparently the two excerpts are in contradiction the first one says that you do not need to get entangled and the second one says that uh, you need to meet all your fears all your impurities all your perfection imperfections head on so the questioner is a little confused and she is asking what to do does one seek to cleanse herself or does one need to plunge into her own conditioning i'll repeat the question for you in the context of the pull of maya and the worldly here relating to the pull of the sexual energy does one acknowledge it and transcend it by focusing on god or does one drop the defenses 
against Maya, go through the worldly and only then arrive at the door of the Anand. There is really no contradiction. What does it mean when I repeatedly suggest that one needs to go close to herself? If you do not listen carefully, you might assume that I am saying that one needs to get involved or keep getting involved in the same kind of stuff that one is accustomed to. But that is not what I am saying. Coming close to oneself means having the courage to look at oneself as one is. If you want to measure your temperature, you would not do that while taking an ice bath. If you do that, then you are deliberately trying to fool yourself. If you are underweight and you want to check up your weight, you do not do that wearing heavy boots and a lot of winter clothing. If you do that, again you are trying to fool yourself. Coming close to oneself means looking at one's existing patterns. One does not need to plunge further into sex. Sex is an existing pattern. You are already deep, deep into it. You only need to open your eyes to see that sex is all over you, all over humanity. Sex is the very fiber of the human mind. It is there. You don't need to build it up in order to watch it. If you watch your daily actions, you will anyway find the presence of sex there. What is sex? To seek gratification in material is sex. Man seeks gratification in all kinds of materials. The world itself is material. But commonly, we denote sex as the tendency to seek gratification only from a material human body. Be it a material human body, or be it a large house or a new car whenever you look outwards and tell yourself that something that has a shape, size, form, name, color will be able to satisfy you it is nothing but the sexual instinct in function. You are already doing that all the time. Whenever 
the other is important to you it is the primitive sexual instinct you are asking does one need to enter it there is no question of entering it because you are already in it already always without exception is there a moment when the mind is not attracted to material is there a moment when the mind is not attracted to something or somebody even when you seek something inanimate other than a human body you seek it for yourself don't you let's say you like a new watch for whom do you like the watch for yourself this again is nothing but attraction towards a body in this case one's own body sex is nothing but the importance that one accords to the body and it is not about having intercourse either look at the way many people treat their pets look at the way they hold them it is obvious that the connection is largely physical sex as we commonly know it might not be happening but still the relationship is sexual or look at even the relationship between a mother and a child if the mother looks at the child largely as a body then the relationship is again sexual though it is some kind of perversity a taboo to explicitly label it as sexual parent child relationship is one relationship that is supposed to be perfectly asexual but it is not what is the father or the mother caring for the purity of the child's mind the peace that the child must have are they bothered that the child must not be conditioned are they making sure that the child not only does not get conditioned by the world but is also able to overcome the pre-existing biological conditioning are they caring for the child's liberation if not then they are caring only for the child's body they might be very worried how does our child look what is the color of his skin how much does he weigh is he wearing the right clothes but if you are not worried about the child's heart if you cannot look into the child's soul then you are a very superficial parent the relationship is merely skin deep and therefore sexual sex is the tendency to find that in the superficial which can be found only in the depths
Sex is the foolishness to skim the surface of the ocean and hope for pearls. When you look at the other as a sexual object, then you feel that peace can be had from the other's skin or flesh. It is a foolish expectation, it would be belied. You will keep hoping again and again and your hopes will be shattered. People talk of sex as evil. I look at it as mostly stupid. It is stupid not because of the act per se, but because of the hopes, expectations and dreams attached to the act. You are not engaging in the sexual activity like an animal. You are engaging in the sexual activity like one who hopes to go beyond his restlessness, his bondages, his tension. Using sex. For us, sex is much more social than biological. What you do in the bed is determined so much by the media, by your friends, by what you have heard and read, by what is the going trend. We are trying to find God in genitals. We would be disappointed, obviously. And that is happening continuously, Shilpi. Look at the way human beings live. Gaping at the world. Ogling at the expanse. Feeling belittled by the hugeness of what they see around themselves. And therefore, eager, salivating, to have something from the world. Like dogs, roaming around a meat shop. wetting the earth with their saliva, hoping that a piece or two, even a piece of refuse, would somehow come to them. That's how the common man looks at the world. Can I have something from it? There is so much that the world has to offer, money, riches, prestige, satisfaction. Comfort, pleasures, happiness, achievement, glory. There is so much the world has to offer. Can I have a little of all that you can give me? Dogs around a meat shop. Eager for flesh. That is sex. Hmm? 
dogs in front of a meat shop eager for flesh and the dogs are all right they are not expecting that the flesh would liberate them they look at the meat as just a thing that would fill up the stomach human beings look at the world as a thing that would fill up an existential hollow at their center no meat no flesh no man no woman no material no sofa set no furniture no car no watch no amount of money can do that and that is why sex keeps failing and that is why human beings need so much of it if you look at animals sex there is episodic periodic no animal remains horny throughout the year 16 hours a day sometimes 36 hours a day man is the only animal that is always sexually active why because man is the only animal who is always ambitious because you are constantly a seeker because you are constantly feeling that hollow because you are constantly feeling inferior so you are always seeking something from the world always a by product of that is that you are also always seeking sexual gratification when all the time you are seeking prestige money success it is but obvious that you will also seek sex all the time these two are one kabir looks at a dog and says only sometimes is the dog active the bitch is in heat at other times antar rahe udas by udas he means indifferent and about human beings he says kami nar kutta sada chhe ritu bara maas the dog is a fucking dog only 2 months of the year but man is that fucking dog 12 months a year kami nar kutta sada 6 ritu 12 maas even the dog that way is not a dog always but man is a dog always so man is dogger than a dog now when you are anyway in worlds of kabir active chhere to 12 maas six seasons and 12 months where is the question of plunging more into sex from where will you get a 13th month 12 months you are already obsessed with sex it's just that you do not watch it it's just that you do not call it by the name of sex so don't think that you are being advised to heighten your sexual activity there is no scope left you are already at the peak 
What more can you do now? It's just that sex has various types. Some types are very explicit. And the other types are hidden, implicit. A leader is seeking satisfaction by looking at the 20,000 bodies gathered to listen to him. Where is he getting his satisfaction from? 20,000 bodies. This is sexual activity, but you will not call it as sex. You will say, oh, it is just a leader addressing an audience. It is not leader addressing an audience. It is sexual activity. You are counting the number of bodies. Hmm? Somebody is counting the number of votes or customers or subscribers. Somebody is counting the population of his country and taking pride in it. Somebody is counting the strength of a country's armed forces. You know what? Our army is 5 lakh soldiers and taking pride in it. What do all these acts basically involve? Giving importance to? Come on. The bodies. And hence all of these are hidden forms of sexual activity. If sex is about entering the other's body, then why don't you see that the world, the entire world has already entered your body? Now how can you have more sex? The entire world is already inside you, is it not? Look at your mind. Does it have anything original, fundamental? What is your mind full of? The entire world. Why should you not call that as penetration? Sexual activity is going on. Whenever you try to dominate a person, whenever you try to occupy the mind of a person, don't you see what you are doing? What are you doing? You are trying to enter that person. That is sex. And don't you all do that? Aren't we all doing that all the time? And is it not very pleasurable? The moment someone says, you know what, I keep thinking of you. Do you see how your ego swells up? Somebody thinks of me. I have entered somebody's mind. If you have entered somebody's mind, then you are And there is no protection. Now you must know why our definition of virginity is so Amusing. The fellow already has the entire world inside him or her and has the temerity to call herself a virgin. Only a Buddha is virgin. Only a Mary is virgin even after giving birth to a Jesus. That is the real meaning of virginity. When your mind is untouched, unspoiled, unoccupied, that is virginity. A Krishna is virgin even after 
frolicking with thousands of women. Have you heard this story? It's an interesting story. So Krishna and Rukmini were holidaying by the Yamuna. Hmm? And they come to hear that a great saint is camping on the other side, on the other shore. Both feel elated and Krishna suggests to Rukmini, let's cook a good feast and offer it to the saint. It's rare that you meet a saint in such conditions. Rukmini happily agrees. So good food is cooked. And Rukmini is about to cross the river to serve it to the saint. But it's the monsoons. The river is flooded. It's almost like a sea. You can't see the other end. So Rukmini comes back and tells Krishna, you have asked me to serve food, but how do I cross this river, Yamuna of yours? They say you have played with the Yamuna. So do something about the river now. So Krishna says, oh, it's very easy. You just go and tell the river that the eternal virgin, the Sanatan Brahmachari has asked you to make way for Rukmini. Rukmini says, uh, and who is that eternal virgin? Krishna says, who else but me? Now, Rukmini is in a very good position to testify that Krishna is not a virgin. In fact, nobody can know that better than her. So she's astounded. She says, you want me to get killed or something? You are telling me that you are a brahmachari? Krishna says, let the river Prove to you what I mean. So he says, go to the river and tell Yamuna that the eternal virgin has told her to make way for Rukmini. So she goes there and tells Yamuna, totally in disbelief, but she just repeats Krishna's words. And the river makes way and she crosses the river. Now she does not know what is happening. She is Not only confused about what is happening then, she is also remembering what all has happened in the past. And she is stretching her memory and figuring out what is happening and what might have happened. Anyway, she serves food to the saint and the saint is happy with the stuff and offers her blessings. And now she has to return. And again the river is flooded. How do, does she cross it? So now there is no mobile phone. How does she communicate with Krishna? So she goes rather to the saint. Hmm? And she says, Sir, help me cross this river. I am anyway confused. The saint says, fine, let me confuse you a little more. I know what you are confused with. This time you tell the river that the one who never touches any food has asked you to make way for Rukmini. Rukmini says, and sir, who is the one? 
who never touches any food. The saint says, come on Rukmini, that's me. Rukmini says, but I just have had you accept all the stuff I brought. You ate it in front of me. The saint says, I ate all the food just as Krishna keeps with all the women. So you try. So she goes to Yamuna and says that the one who never touches any food has asked you to make way for Rukmini and Yamuna again makes way and she comes back. And this time she really comes back to Krishna. This time she really understands who Krishna is and what is the relationship that Krishna has with the body, with the mind and with the Atma. Hmm? Man is a product of sex and every cell of the body is buzzing and teeming with sex. We are a sexual storehouse. Hmm? Even in one's last breath, there is sexual activity. Just as there is sexual activity in one's first breath. So we are already at the peak. Now you can't go any higher. Right? Watch. Look at the mind's inexplicable attraction towards the world. And if you can watch that, you will be able to see the needlessness, the stupidity of so many things. You will be able to go beyond. Hmm?